What started out as a challenge to explore Cuba while running, from Santa Clara to Havana, has evolved to a week of unexpected adventures. No longer traveling exclusively on foot, we've explored the root of the conflict between the U.S. and Cuba while crossing the vast sugarcane countryside. We've met plenty of new friends sharing their ways of life in Santa Clara, Cologne, Matanzas. Dang. <laughs> And we've awed in the majesty of nature while speeding up a local river and discovering the Vignales Valley, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But now, our journey takes us back to Havana. If you're like me, when you think of Havana, you think pastel-colored buildings, vintage American cars, and Roomba beats pouring onto the streets from smoke-filled lounges. That Havana does exist, but the truth, as almost always, is much more nuanced. Havana is a city still recovering from recent hurricanes. Maria, Ida, and Ivan washed out homes, caused intense flooding, and destroyed buildings which were already suffering from deteriorating infrastructure. Severe drought, continued sanctions, squeezed the city's residents for those most valuable resources, food and water. But through it all, Havana and its people stand strong with resilience and ingenuity. This is none more apparent than at Animas 303, our hotel for the first couple of nights in the city. Animas, opened and staffed by a group of under 30 year olds, is a testament to the Cuban way of being. Forge through with what's available, make the best of the space you have, and share that goodness with those around you. comfortable bed, air conditioning, and breakfast. Animas 303 is a pocket of authentic Cuban luxury among the bustling streets just outside. But whether it's the building of a new hotel, training in the performing arts, or acting as a refuge for expat writers, a determined yet reflective spirit fills these streets. If the best art comes from trauma, from hardship, then Cuba no doubt has lots to say. Finding your place among the world while simultaneously standing firm in who you are, it demands a delicate balance. And on the whole, Cubans have perfected this dance. Like anywhere, Cuba has its holidays celebrating and memorializing the past. Each September 28th, kids play in the streets, large pots of stew cook on open flames, and traditional Cuban music floods the city. Block by block, street parties celebrate the formation of the CDR, the Committee for the Defense of the Revolution. Think neighborhood watch organizations, but with political overtones. Founded by Fidel in 1959, it's another reminder that Che, Castro, and the rebels are never far from mind. Havana, it's a city slow to change, frozen in time while cautiously stepping into the future. During our visit, the internet is available only in designated public spaces. It becomes a community event to gather and check email, browse the news, and get glimpses of the outside world.
We spend a day exploring the landmarks that helped shape the Havana that stands today. At the Museum of the Revolution, the former presidential palace, our adventure comes full circle. We're out in the country town of Cardenas. We saw the burial place of Jose Antonio Echeverria. Here, we see the bullet holes left during the attempted coup, the attempted overthrow of dictator Batista in 1957. Underneath the opulence of the Hotel Nacional de Cuba, built in 1930, lies a vast bunker a network of tunnels dug during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. No weapons or Soviet bombs were stored here. Rather, the network that circles the hotel was used for espionage and housed periscopes that kept an eye out for any incoming foreigners into the bay. Cuba is often associated with the revolution but its history on the world stage runs deep. Castillo de los Tres Reyes del Moro guards Havana's harbor, protecting the island from not only pirates, but other Europeans looking to expand their interests into the New World. Built in 1585 by Spanish forces, the fortress saw its greatest action late during the Seven Years' War, when British forces successfully took Havana after a six-month battle. While the occupation lasted less than a year before being returned to Spain, Cuba would see a rapid transformation as the British moved quickly in connecting the island to North American and Caribbean trade. And no visit to Havana is complete without a visit to Plaza de la Cienega in the midst of the old Havana district. One of the city's main squares, it's recognized as its most beautiful. Here, the Cathedral de la Habana stands proud as Havana's greatest example of 18th century Baroque architecture. Originally swampland, and then a grand neighborhood housing Havana's richest residents. Across the square is the area's oldest house. Now, the Museum of Colonial Art. Checking into the five star Grand Picard Hotel, we see a new vision for Havana. The hotel boasts sleek interiors, crisp sheets, satellite TV, and a pool that is a feat of modern architecture. Swimming in the sixth floor infinity pool with hotel rooms hanging above, this is first class luxury in a city not previously known for such. It proclaims fresh, it screams future. Yet down on the streets below, Hundreds of years of history play out. The chants and rhythmic clapping of Juego de Mani, or Game of War, originally developed by African slaves brought to Cuba, lives on through a celebration of the past, folklore, and its current social activity. Two men at a time enter the chanting circle to spar with smooth movements of the hands, high leg kicks, quick ducking, and strategic jumping. As this ritual steeped in history played out against this ultra-modern hotel, my days in the countryside fill my mind. The spirit of the revolution, still highly spoken of among so many new friends, rang within. Their desire to live free, sovereign, and independent clashed, if only for a moment, up against the smooth white exterior of the Spanish-owned hotel chain. It's this desire for which the great Cuban writer Jose Marti wrote and fought so strongly for. 
and it's at the memorial to this apostle of Cuban independence, at which our journey comes to a close. So we've made it here to Revolution Square in Havana. It wasn't all running. It wasn't all walking. That's okay. It was still a whole lot of fun. Born in 1853 in Havana, under the Spanish Empire, Martí quickly came to resent foreign rule at a young age. Arrested and exiled to Spain by age 18, he had already begun an extensive library of influential writings questioning liberty and independence. While overseas, Martí urged the formation of a revolutionary party, one that would establish Cuba as its own country with full self-governance. Returning home to help lead an uprising, he was killed in battle in 1895. But his light was not relinquished. Rather, his killing served as a national rallying cry for independence. Marti writes, In a time of crisis, the peoples of the world must rush to get to know each other. While perhaps the threat of an intense crisis between Cuba and the United States has passed, our countries, our peoples, still live with the ramifications of decisions made. I leave the island with hope. Hope that the memory of the revolution, of Che, might diminish just enough so a new future might take root. I leave the island with hope that the U.S. embargo might soon, too, become a memory. Is this the generation that takes a step off the road we've been traveling? Wonders what else is possible and steps into the unknown? Perhaps, and perhaps if Cuba does, they find a neighbor also willing to chart a new way forward. And we take the first few steps of this new adventure together. So there you have it, a 200 mile run across Cuba. That ended up not being a 200 mile run across. But we still got across Cuba. I'm curious, have you ever been to Havana? If not, would you like to go to Havana? What do you imagine the city to be like? And has this video helped change your perception about what this city might be? Please feel free to reach out and leave me a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've been following along during this Cuba series, thank you. I so appreciate you returning and sharing this experience with me. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm so glad you found us. If you found this video to be entertaining, or if you found anything in it to be of value to you, please consider subscribing by tapping that button down below. You can hit the bell so you get notified when our next video goes live. You'll never miss it. Maybe you'll even give this video a like. It's your support that is helping to grow this channel. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. Thank you. Did you miss where this adventure went off track? If you did, you can watch this video right here. Until next time, my friends, let's keep finding what makes us similar while celebrating our differences. Let's keep looking towards the future while remembering how we got here. And of course, let's keep exploring the luxury of adventure.